Welcome back to Oakhaven. While this video is about how to mix up herbicides, I want to make it clear at the beginning that we are not encouraging the willy-nilly spread of uh, chemicals through the woodlands. Uh, actually, the whole point of this video is to how to mix is how to mix up these chemicals in a way that is useful but will minimize its impact on the environment. Uh, I don't really like the idea of putting chemicals out into the woodlands, but I also don't like the idea of having all of these invasive species out in the woodlands that are having more of a negative impact on the woodlands. So it's a, it's a you know, balancing act of which one is going to be worse. I'd also like to mention that when we are using herbicides in our woodlands, we are trying to use herbicides that don't have much soil activity. Any herbicide that gets into the soil is basically bound up and it is not killing things and not continuing to kill things. That's why we don't use pre-emergent herbicides. Uh, we use post-emergent herbicides that the plant has to be up and growing for the herbicide to work. It, uh, we don't put herbicides down that have soil activity that will be killing things for a longer period of time. So we limit our herbicides to uh, a glyphosate product, triclopyr, this happens to be triclopyr 4, and the uh, phenoxaprop, uh, which is the active ingredient in a claim extra that we use for uh, Japanese stilt grass. Now, most of these chemicals you can buy in their ready-to-use or RTU form at the, the at Lowe's or Home Depot or at a, a lawn and garden place. Uh, the problem with that is that they tend to be very expensive, where you can buy the the concentrated version and then you can dilute it to specifically what you need for whatever that that plant or that uh, season or whatever that application rate um, is that you want to use it for. Uh, it's, it's much more economical and there is much more flexibility in how you're using it. Our goal again is to, to try to use as little chemical as possible uh, to put out into the environment but still using enough chemical that we don't have to treat it a little bit this year and then it didn't get it all so we have to treat a little bit next year and then a little bit the f next year and then we end up uh, treating it over a long period of time and we never really give the environment a chance to recuperate. Our goal is to get in there, get rid of the invasive and let the uh, the land start to, to, um, to heal up. So we've had some comments on some of our videos where we've talked specifically about different species that we're not clear enough as to what we mean when we talk about a dilution like we say, we use a 20% glyphosate solution for cut stems, for honeysuckle, or for autumn olive. What do we mean by 20%? Do we mean 20% of some product, or do we mean 20% of the active ingredient? We almost always mean 20%, or I would say always mean 20% of the active ingredient. There's too many variations in um, concentrations that you can buy. Glyphosate, you can buy in 41%, you can buy it in 15%, you can buy it in 4%, you can buy it in 2%. I'm not talking about percentage of a certain product, I'm talking about the active ingredient, the glyphosate. So we start with, for glyphosate, we start with a 41% concentrated solution. When, we're, when we need a 20% um, spray solution for using on cut stems, we'll take that and cut it in half. We'll mix the half, the 41% with water to cut it down to, to about 20%. Technically it's 20.5%, but that's close enough for what we're, we're doing. So how do we calculate how much concentrate to use to make up a certain percentage of active ingredient? Now we're going to get into some serious math, so hopefully we won't lose too many of you. We're going to go through the process because I think it's important to understand the, the rationale behind how we do this calculation, but we will also put in a table of some common concentrations that you can either take a screenshot of or you can take a picture of it with your phone or something else if you want to that'll give you some some standard to to go by. Uh, but I really would like you to go through the, uh, the the math so you understand how to how to apply it under varying circumstances. Now I will say that when we mix it up, I have a cheat sheet cup here that I've marked off. The, the amounts of, in this case, it's a glyphosate concentrate that I use most commonly, so I don't have to, I have, don't have to uh, uh, recalculate it each time. I've got this clear cup that I've, I've created a, a measuring cup specifically for that, that use. Okay, welcome back to school. If you slept through algebra, this may be new. Otherwise, it should sound fairly familiar to you. Here's the formula that we use to calculate how much to dilute a concentrated formula to get a, um, a vo certain volume of a new concentration. 
So, we start with the initial concentration. Uh, we're going to use, for our example, the 41% glyphosate times the initial volume of concentrate, that's what we're trying to solve for, equals the final concentration, what we're shooting for, and the final volume, how much we're making up, whether it's a full sprayer, whether it's part of a sprayer, whether it's whatever that is, that's the final concentration. So here we have the formula, C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. Now, this is what we're trying to solve for, is V1. So, as you remember from school, you can divide both of these by the same thing, and we haven't changed the equation. And what that does, you can remove then the C1 from that side of the equation, and you get V1, the initial concentration that we're looking for, equals this formula. And there, we're going to work through that process now. So this is what we're really concerned about. If you don't get anything else out of this video, that's the formula that you're looking for to make this calculation. So let's do an example. We want to know the volume of concentrate, and we're going to say it's a, uh, a 40... We're, we're looking for, say, a 20% concentrate. So 20% concentrate, and we're going to make one gallon... And we're starting with C1, which is a 41% concentrate. So, 20 times 1 divided by 41 equals, it's about 0 0.49 percentages cancel out. We're left with gallons. So just about half a gallon of concentrate in a total gallon will give us a 20% working solution from a 41% um, concentrate that we started with. That's what we would expect it. That's what we said when we started this, was that we basically cut it in half, use a half a gallon of concentrate, half a gallon of um, water to make a full gallon of 20%. That's just verifying that our, our formula has worked out pretty well here. Let's try this again using a different concentration. What if we want to make a, a 2% concentration? So we want to know the volume of the concentrate. So we're going a 2% concentration times, let's stick with one gallon, divided by the 41% concentrate. That equals 0 0.049 gallons. of the 41% concentrate mixed into, or mixed to make a total of one gallon of, of uh, active solution, gives us a 2% uh, working solution. Now, recognize that all of these things, when we say it's for a gallon, it's not how much to add to a gallon, it's how much concentrate there is in a, in a gallon. So you don't, if we calculate this out and say 0.049 gallons, we don't add that to a gallon of water to get our final concentrate. We add that, and then we bring up the volume to one gallon, so there's a total of one gallon. So, 0 0.049 gallons. I challenge you to go ahead and, and me measure that out in something. We don't normally measure things in, in, that, in gallons in that small amount. So we multiply it by a conversion factor. So in this case, we want to try do, uh, do ounces. So we're going to multiply it by a conversion factor, and we want gallons to disappear. So we're going to put gallons on the bottom, and one gallon equals 128 ounces. Okay? Anything over one stays the same. Gallons are going to cross out. We're going to be left with ounces. That equals 6.3 about ounces of 41% concentrate mixed into a gallon to make a 2% solution. There is the magic math. Okay, so Kimber has said to me that she doesn't like it in ounces. She would prefer to have it in milliliters. So we're going to do another calculation just for practice here to, to convert. Ready for this? To convert 6.3 ounces 
times a conversion factor, ounces to milliliters. So there's 29.6, is that right? Milliliters in an ounce. So ounces will cross out, and I'm going to do this on the calculator here, 6.3 times 29.6. So that equals 186 milliliters. So it depends on what kind of measuring cup you have, whether you want to measure it in milliliters, whether you want to measure it in ounces, ounces, or if you've got a special thing that you're measuring it in, in hundredths of a gallon. So I'm not going to actually mix it up. We're just going to talk about what we do. Um, our process, when if we're mixing up a full gallon, and you could change these calculations for a quart, or for three gallons, for a backpack sprayer, for more, for less, whatever it is. Now you understand the math, you can do it your, on your own. Um, in the case of the 2% the solution, we're going to take the glyphosate. I'm going to take my cup that I've already have marked off, 186 milliliters is right here. You could also use measuring cups or whatever it is that's best for you. If you're me measuring it in ounces, you know, 6.3 ounces is, you know, two-thirds of a, of a cup if you were measuring it in a, in a measuring cup. So we take that amount, we take the sprayer, we fill it up most of the way with water, then we add our active ingredient. We add the active ingredient after the water as much as possible uh, because the active ingredient in a lot of these things tend to foam up uh, when you add water to them and then it makes it really hard to measure the, the levels and then sometimes it actually fills up the whole, if I'm making a whole gallon, uh, it'll foam up and I can't actually put all of the water into it. So we fill it up like three quarters of the way with, with water. We add the active ingredient. We add anything else that we're adding to it, like a, um, a colorant. Um, for colorant, we use um, laser red or laser blue with, from Sanko Industries. Uh, the, in, the label says to add a half an ounce per gallon. Uh, we put a little bit more than that in there because uh, a lot of times half an ounce is fine for viewing it just after you've sprayed it, but after it's dried, it's harder to see, so we put a full ounce of um, colorant in. And then depending on what the, the product is, you may need to add a surfactant. So a surfactant will be like a wetting agent for the herbicide. It will allow it to sheet over the leaf or whatever surface you're putting it on, rather than beating up. If you don't have a surfactant in them and the leaf is has a little bit of um, waxiness to it, uh, it, it tends to just bead up on there and it may just roll off and it won't get any active ingredient into the, 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 um, the leaf surface. So you add a surfactant. A lot of times glyphosate comes with a surfactant. This that we're using here, this Imitator Plus, has a surfactant already mixed into it. It's just a general surfactant. Surfactants tend to be um, fairly toxic, particularly in um, aquatic habitats. Um, a lot of the, the bad press that Roundup gets is not because Roundup is uh, a hazard, but because the surfactant that they add to Roundup is a, is a hazard. So this probably has a very similar surfactant in it. Uh, it's fine for terrestrial areas, but if it gets into the water, it can be a problem. So if you're, using a, if you're mixing in a surfactant that you're going to be using in an aquatic area or where it may wash off into a stream, it's better to... Uh, to to, mix, to, to buy your glyphosate without a surfactant mixed into it. So buy something like Roundup Custom that doesn't have a surfactant in it and then add a surfactant to it. We've used uh, the surfactant Plexmate, which is an aquatic friendly or surfactant. So you can add that to a glyphosate product and then you can use it. We've used it for cattails. You can use it in a, in a wetland uh, setting. So that's if you were gonna buy the, the chemical, the active ingredient separately and add a surfactant. You can also, by like this, the Shore Clear is a glyphosate product. It already has an aquatic friendly surfactant mixed in with it. So you don't have to add the surfactant if you're using something like that. The Acclaim Extra that we use for Japanese stilt grass needs a surfactant. Again, when it's just terrestrial, we just use this fairly inexpensive 20, um, 80 20 surfactant. Um, it's just any non ionic surfactant works. Um, again, it's better if you keep it out of uh, an aquatic situation. If, if you're in an area where it's going to be along a stream, uh, it would be better to use a, 
a more environmentally friendly surfactant. So after you've added your active ingredient and any other um, chemicals that you're adding, then bring the water level up to the final level of uh, what your working solution is. Obviously, if you don't have a level, you know, you're not doing it in a container that has a final level in it, you could calculate, oh, I was, had a gallon, I've got half a gallon of uh, active ingredients, so then I can add a, a half gallon of water, or I've got 6.3 ounces of active ingredient, I need 122 ounces of water, and you could add that in, um, and it'll bring it up to the same volume. A lot of this herbicide, you know, this is not rocket science, so um, it, the amount of variation there is as you're spraying or using it is pretty wide, so if you're not exactly on, it's not really going to make too much of a difference. So there's a lot of discussion on uh, internet websites where they talk about what's the shelf life when you mix these things up. There's not a solid answer that I can give you on that. Um, concentrate, in its original form, they say will last maybe four years, although I've heard of plenty of farmers that have had glyphosate in drums for you know, dozens of years, and it's still just as effective. It really depends on the, the contamination level and what, what gets in there to, to uh, interact with the active ingredient. I would say that you're, you're good for you know, at least four years um, for a concentrate. Once you mix it up, it really depends on how clean your equipment was. Glyphosate is known for the fact that it, it binds to clay particles very readily. That's one of the great things about it in a, in a natural area, is that it gets into the soil and it's bound up and it doesn't translocate, doesn't uh, spread out into the, the waterways. You know, glyphosate you can feel fairly comfortable, it's not going to uh, leach down through into a, um, an aquifer or a waterway. Um, that same fact, uh, fact, though, that it binds to clay means that if you mix it up with dirty water or your container is, is dirty, and you mix up the glyphosate in that dirty container, a lot of the active ingredient will bind with that dirt that's in there, and you'll start losing effectiveness almost immediately. So I would say, you know, best case scenario, mix up what you're going to use over a short period of time. You know, I use stuff that I've mixed up six months later, and I've never noticed a, a decrease in effectiveness. So you're probably good for months, but, you know, it's probably good practice to only mix up the amount that you're going to be using. So hopefully we've clarified some of the misconceptions about uh, how to mix up some of these chemicals, and hopefully we've made it clearer. And again, I will put in a chart that shows some of the most uh, commonly used uh, concentrations. Maybe we'll put that also in our in the, the description, so you could just look at that if you don't want to watch a whole video on it. If this was useful to you, and you like learning about nature and this type of thing, Please consider subscribing to the, the channel. We appreciate that. Uh, if you have comments, what you're doing, if you've got easier ways to do this or shortcuts, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, we always like to try to keep up a dialogue with, uh, with other people that are out there uh, trying to protect our, our natural areas. So anyway, thanks for coming along.